I now give the floor to His Excellency Francisco Bustillo, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Uruguay. Mr. President, Distinguished Secretary General, distinguished members of the General Assembly, exactly two years ago when we commemorated the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, we were through the first year of the pandemic. It was a year of fear and uncertainty due to the unexpected eruption of a pandemic which has led to serious loss of life and had has impacted the health of our peoples and the, our economies. The international situation has not improved. There seem to be new sources of tension, which has made it difficult for us to reco uh, recover economically. And we are having trouble uh, paying the high cost uh, due to the pandemic. The unjust, there is the unjustifiable invasion by Russia in Ukraine. My country has called this a clear violation of uh, purposes and principles of the Charter for which this organization was established. And it should be recognized by all members of this organization. We call on Russia to uh, withdraw from the territory of Ukraine and to cease all, all hostilities immediately. The parties in this conflict should do everything possible to return to the negotiating table to resolve their dispute peacefully in accordance with the UN Charter. The fallout of the conflict has impacted the international arena, and it has a serious impact on the daily lives of millions of people. The, Im the impact on uh, the economy has meant backsliding for many countries. The deficit in agricultural goods has seriously impacted developing countries, and access to markets uh, international markets has affected many countries worldwide. Others are seeing a uh, uh, drop in their uh, price of their raw materials, as well as uh, in uh, uh, high rise in the cost of oil, and this has impacted their citizens. We are not meeting the expectations uh, of COP26. We've only had some positive results. It's been clear that countries have not uh, are not committed to achieving uh, the rise of what, uh, a cap to the rise of 1.5 degrees Celsius at pre-industrial levels. We hope that all countries will commit to mobilizing financial resources to support adaptation and mitigation measures for climate change. Otherwise, the international community will have missed the last, perhaps the last opportunity. Our future generations have the legitimate right to expect that uh, we should uh, meet uh, the challenges we are facing today. Uruguay has supported the Paris Agreement, and we are firmly committed to its objectives and goals. This is the common path we have defined, and we need greater efforts to fulfill that commitment. In this context, and given these important challenges, multilateralism is not an empty word. It has meaning. We need to strengthen the multilateral system. We are all part of it, and it is a shared common good. We must improve our regional and international efforts, and we must uh, work towards adaptation and prevention. The international community today is facing three major challenges, international peace and security, the environment, and global health. The multilateral system is essential for addressing all three of these challenges, not uh, as an inspiration, but it's also a key tool so that our efforts are effective. That being said, let me say yet again that we are committed to multilateralism. Mr. President, despite the adverse circumstances, 2022 should also be a landmark 
for achieving the achievements of sustainable development goals. We have gone through the decade of action, and we must now move to furthering those actions. Uruguay submitted the fifth national voluntary report on the achievements in 2021 in Uruguay. This report is a clear reaffirmation of my country's commitment to the Agenda 2030 and to achieving the SDGs. Uruguay is doing everything possible to formulate active policies and the best indicators to that end. There are shortfalls in the international uh, arena which impact the economic and social development of our countries. Quite often, criteria are established for international cooperation, but it often has a negative impact on our peoples. Many countries, including Uruguay, have been seen uh, have been seen through the old uh, way of looking at uh, development, including just GDP uh, indicators. Mr. President, states have the primary responsibility to protect the human rights of their peoples. We are saddened to see that in many places of the world, the human rights of men, millions of women, men, and children are flagrantly violated in particular when the perpetrators of these atrocities are their own governors and leaders who use repressive measures and violate their international obligations in this sphere. This reality is even harder to witness in when we see it in the Latin America and the Caribbean. There is no more appropriate form than the General Assembly to uh, recognize the humanist role of my country and our permanent commitment to human rights. We believe that international agreements uh, underpinned by this organization should be fulfilled by all members of this organization. Similarly, in particular when dealing with very sensitive issues in uh, on the international agenda, we should not politicize them. I w would refer to our belief that we should bolster the rights of women, girls, boys, older persons, migrants, persons living with disabilities, and the LGBTI community members. Migration is a result of wars and political and economic crises of varying degrees. Th those have increased in recent years because of a lack of regional stability, such as the conflict in Ukraine, as well as the civil war in Syria, or the events in Libya, Myanmar, and Venezuela in our own region. They have led to an increase in the flow of persons and families leaving their homes and their countries seeking safety and relief. I wish to highlight the role of the International Criminal Court as a key instrument for the system of international justice and its relevance as a deterrent factor for perpetrators of genocidal acts, mass atrocities, and crimes against humanity. Mr. President, in the maintenance of international peace and security, and as we say yearly, Uruguay reiterates its support for the UN peace missions. Our country has a lengthy history of contributing to these missions, beginning at the end of 19, the 1940s, and we have deployed units to a number of missions for more than 70 years on an ongoing basis. Uruguay is one of the first 15 troop-contributing countries to the United Nations missions, and currently we are primarily deploying in the Congo and in Andoff. Uruguay is firmly committed to peace and international security and the protection of civilians. In line with the spirit of Security Council Resolution 1325, on the 21st of June, Uruguay submitted its National Plan of Action on Women, Peace, and Security. Mr. President, Uruguay is one of the founding countries of this organization. We have cooperated actively throughout its history to preserve international peace and security. Uruguay 
believes there should be serious and firm compromises on and commitment on uh, commitments rather on the part of all members of the international community with regard to uh, uh, nuclear weapons and with regard to the most recent conference on the uh, 10th NTP, we must reflect on this aspect of the work done by this organization. We will continue to support the UN disarmament agenda, and we will continue to seek agreements which will ensure that the disarmament architecture works efficiently and that we can trust in it. Factors of insecurity in the international arena. In this area, we must recognize the growing impact of international organized crime, drug trafficking, and international terrorism. Our government has set as one of its priorities combating drug crimes so that we can provide our society a high level of security, and we are firmly committed uh, to cooperating against organized crime and terrorist activities regionally and internationally. Uruguay is committed to the cybersecurity uh, agenda and combating cybercrime. This organization has a key responsibility in this area, and Uruguay will participate actively in the uh, fora taking place. Additionally, and currently, Uruguay has formalized its request to the U Council of Europe to uh, ratify the Budapest Convention on Cybercrime and to have the most modern legislation so that we can combat cybercrime. As we can all see, the tasks of this organization are necessary, timely, and many. As the Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez has said, we must combat the dysfunctioning that paralyzes us. As an organization, we must ensure that we represent uh, all peoples of the world. And we repeat that as we meet here annually. Democracy is not a perfect model, nor does it solve all the problems men and women in the world are facing. But it is the system of governance that best preserves the wishes and hopes of mankind, namely freedom. Democracy is the political system which best reflects the human condition, our expectations, our spiritual and material desires, and the enjoyment to and the right to elect our leaders. Social and political order in a country should reflect the genuine will of its own citizens. However, Democracy, its principles and values are systematically rejected in many places in the world. For Uruguay, the democratic system is part of our history and our best traditions. It is a source of identity for our people, and we are very proud that we are seen as a full-fledged democracy, but we are also aware of our responsibility as leaders to strengthen democracy every day and to meet and overcome the numerous challenges. Supporting democracy and its values, our democracy, our rule of law, all of that has meant that the voice of Uruguay is not just heard but respected internationally. This has been and will continue to be a founding pillar uh, for the contribution of my country to the international arena. And on that basis, Uruguay once again renews its commitment to the international system of nations. Thank you. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Uruguay.